Good afternoon, and welcome to our live Zoom call. Yep. I see you. We are extremely pleased to be here today. Joining me today will be Dr. Barbara Clock, who is the medical officer for the School District of Philadelphia. My name is Karen Lynch, and I'm the Chief of Student Support Services with the School District. Today, you're going to have the opportunity to hear a brief update uh, about the latest with health and safety planning for the reopening, the successful reopening of schools in the 2021 school year. We're here to listen to your feedback and we're hoping as many people as possible can provide feedback to us as we plan our final document, which will come out in a few days. It's really important to us to have your feedback and it's also important to us that we norm on the rules of engagement for today's session. First of all, your cameras and your microphones are turned off. And this is to be able to give each speaker the opportunity to share their thoughts, their ideas, their comments, and their opinions. We're gonna focus in this session on health and safety. Please limit your feedback to this topic. We have additional sessions on additional topics that are planned. Dr. Barbara Clark and I are going, Dr. Barbara Clark is going to speak for a few moments and share some updates, as I said, on the topic. Please raise your hand when the time comes. Um, there's a function on your menu, on your screen, to be able to raise your hand, and you will be selected in the order in which you raise your hands to speak. Until that time, you will be muted. But once you're raised your hands and, you, and you're called upon, you will be able to, your microphone will be unmuted and you will be able to speak. Your camera will remain off and you will return to mute after speaking. Speakers will have two minutes maximum to share their feedback, their ideas, their thoughts. And after that time, they will return, the microphone will return to mute. If you do not use all of your time, please recognize that we're trying to hear from as many speakers as possible. So if you don't need the full two minutes, um, uh, please indicate so and we can move on to the next speaker. It's likely that not everyone who wants to comment will have the opportunity to do so during this time. So there are two other ways that we've provided for you to give feedback. There's a second health and safety town hall that's scheduled for this coming Thursday, July 9th, from 5 to 6, where you can also participate. And as well, we have another means of providing feedback, which is a, um, located at philasd.org slash 2020 school start. Thank you for your cooperation. And now here's Dr. Barbara Clark. Clark. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Dr. Clark. I am a proud native Philadelphian. I grew up in Juniata Park. Um, and then I am also a former elementary and secondary public school teacher. And finally, I spent um, over 15 years as a proud uh, pediatrician at Chop Care, Rox Chop Care Network Roxborough. And now I am the medical officer for the School District of Philadelphia. And I'm so excited to tell you about all the thought and planning that is going in to a safe reopening of our schools for the 2020-2021 school year. Um, I started this position as a medical officer for the School District of Philadelphia on March 2nd of this year. So I certainly um, jumped in with you know, both feet running and um, started thinking very early about what to do in the case of a pandemic happening and lo and behold, um, here we are. And so what I would like to do is talk to you about the, the deep and thoughtful planning that has been go going on amongst everybody in the district. And the way I think um, so that my head doesn't spin off is sort of either in buckets and in ways of organizing the material just to stay um, on track. And that's what I would like to do for you today is 
introduce that way of thinking so we can all um, be part of this. So number one, we have a virus in our midst. It's called coronavirus or COVID-19. And so the actual fact of acknowledging that virus and that it is here and it has been here is a really important step. And then what we do next is we have to accept that we, this virus is in our midst and that we are going to work as hard as we can to do the best we can to stave it off from our community as a whole and especially from our students and staff of the School District of Philadelphia. So that's our second A. And then the third A is when it arrives and, and you know, in our midst in this school year that we are ready to address it um, in the most appropriate manner. So I would like for you to keep that in the background of the talk. Also in the back, and I would like to think about the following. Again, I think about things in a systematic way to keep us all um, on the right path and me on the right path. So the next thing I'd like to think you to think about is the four pillars that we can use in order to stave off this virus and keep us healthy um, as much as we can. And those four pillars include hygiene, as you know, masks, distancing, and screening for symptoms. So I want to use those as we go forward in thinking about every step that I, we take in the next um, minutes together. And as we know, hygiene can be, um, it, hygiene for me is actually the first step. And it's funny because we we've, uh, haven't heard much lately about singing happy birthday when you wash your hands, but actually that is really important because the entry, the doorway for this virus into our bodies is our nose and our mouth. So hygiene has to be our own personal hygiene of washing our, our hands and also hygiene of other inanimate objects like pens and phones and other things. So that's where I would like um, you to think about hygiene. Secondly, Secondly, um, the next thing is masks. And you've all heard a lot about masks. And as a former teacher, I'm going to continue to use props. So this is the, what I call the baby blue surgical mask. And this is what you see a lot of people wearing. This is a mask made out of, of cloth and a more personalized one. So another important tool that we have of our pillars is masks. You also know about distancing and about six feet of distancing. And finally, screening for symptoms. You know all these things. But as I said, these are going to be our four pillars standing up as we go across our talk today. But most importantly, as these four pillars are standing vertically, um, secondly, we have to think about the foundation that these four pillars stand on. And I feel really strongly about this. And the foundation that these four pillars stand on is our culture and the new culture that we have to accept of facing again, acknowledging this virus is here and how we're going to deal with it. And that culture is really one of cooperation and collaboration amongst us all. And that the cooperation to keep ourselves healthy with those pillars we just talked about in order to keep each other healthy. I certainly don't want to be the person who gets you sick. And also another piece of that culture is also patience with each other. We're all learning this together and we all forget. So if you see somebody on the street, I tend to see my uh, former patients from CHOP on the street, I immediately want to go up and hug them. Um, and we have to really stop ourselves. And if I forget to stop myself, I'm asking you to remind me to stay distant and also to wear my mask and to wash my hands and feel free to ask me all of those things if you come in contact with me. So our thinking at this point, um, as you may expect, and would, would, would and I want to ensure you, um, are from the wonderful support systems we have out there, including the, you know, the, the Centers for Disease Control Guidelines, the Philadelphia Department of Public Health Guidelines, and we have been in wonderful uh, communication and collaboration with them, the Pennsylvania Department of Health Guidelines, and the wonderful CHOP Policy Lab. Again, we've been in frequent conversations and collaborate, collaborative uh, conversations about how to, how to uh, approach the, the coming school year um, during this time period. So now we're missing one crucial part, and that is you. So what we would love to hear is your feedback and input to the plan so that we know what you've been thinking about. And I certainly hope that the next part of what I'm about to say answers the question, some of the questions that you have and will ensure you that we have been thinking really, really hard about this. So 
let's get to it. The way I've been thinking about, and we have been thinking about the plan for the 2020-2021, that's really hard to say, uh, school year is in the following manner. And breaking it down into this process. We need to get to school, so getting to school, getting through the door, getting around the school, meaning during the day, we're now in, and then getting home. So we're gonna talk about that process from the moment your child or you walks out the front door and until they turn and come back to you. So thinking about that, let's continue to think about our four pillars, hygiene, masks, distancing, and screening for symptoms. And so let's get going. So let's talk about getting to school. Getting to school involves transportation. Um, and that getting the, the transportation comes under the categories of hygiene. So what hygiene pillar will be addressed in our transportation? Our transportation um, department has been working really hard um, on thinking about how to keep the buses as safe and healthy for the passengers as possible. And that will include frequent cleaning of the buses, frequent cleaning of high touch areas, definitely cleaning in between each, um, each route that the bus, the bus goes on. And again, so that's hygiene, masking. The bus drivers, the bus attendants, as well as children will be masked at this point. Distancing. Children will be distanced on the bus, every other seat, one child per seat, no child will sit right behind the bus driver and families can sit together. So that's what our recommendations are at this point um, for the getting to school on our provided transportation. Keep in mind that it is now July 7th. Um, we are working hard to, to get everything in plan, but again, we're also looking for your input for have you thought about this. Um, secondly, getting through the door. So it's really going to be important of getting through the door that we continue to have these pillars in place. And one of those pillars is screening for symptoms. The screening for symptoms actually happens before getting through the door with your assistance. So when in the morning that getting to school and getting through the door involves you screening your child for any symptoms suggestive of COVID-19 infection and also taking the temperature of your child and for the child to stay home if a fever of 100.4 or higher is registered. There will be more details on that later, but that is the getting to and getting through the door on, in terms of your child and what we need to do to keep everybody safe. Keep in mind, again, the foundation of our culture is collaboration and cooperation. We want to keep our entire community safe. Keeping your child home when there are sick symptoms will contribute to doing that. So how about the adults? We have a unique situation where we have many, many adults in the school district, as well as 130,000 lovely children. And so we have to think about both of these populations. The getting through the door for adults will involve a pre-entry screening form that will be completed um, every day up until three hours prior to um, entry into work. And that is an electronic screening. Um, and when you answer your questions, you will either get a green check or a red X, and you will display that on your phone when you walk through the door. Um, just in case anybody is also wondering, there will be no temperature checks at any facility. We thought long and hard about that. As I continue to say, our main goal is to educate everyone in a healthy and safety manner. And I feared that by the time we got through all of the temperature checking, it would be time for lunch. And, that, and again, we are keeping the education of our students extremely parallel with the health and safety of everyone involved. So we, are, we, we got to school, we got through the door, and the other things that will be important with getting through the door, again, we did screening, are masks. So every student and every adult in the school district of Philadelphia will be required to wear a face covering, and that is our mask pillar. Then we have our distinct, distancing pillar of getting through the door. When everyone is coming through the door, there will be ways, um, and again, differentiated at each school for, um, 
for everyone to get through the school, school door in a um, socially distanced way. Okay, I'm getting a message to be frank. Oh yes, okay. So I just wanted to check on my, my message. All righty. So we got to and we got through the door. One of the reasons, again, that we are not taking temperatures as well is that with the CDC guidelines and other guidelines that we have been following closely, as you may know, temperature fevers are not a completely strong indicator of infection. And again, we are trying to have everybody healthy and safe and be able to provide an education and use the best um, documentation out there in terms of all the guidelines to do the best that we can. And so that is why we are asking all people, including adults and children to have their temperatures taken at home and uh, report those findings in an honest way. But it wasn't worth um, doing that at, at schools or buildings based on the reliability or the lack of reliability of that as a symptom. Okay, so now we got through, we got through the door in terms of hygiene. We expect everyone to come with, with clean hands. We are going to do our part with keeping the inanimate objects as you're going through the door, including doorknobs and door handles, um, clean and frequently cleaned. Um, we are gonna distance going through the door and we now did the screening. So now, whew, we made it in the building. Before you get to your classroom, you obviously have to walk down the hallway. So let's think about that. What are we doing in the hallway for our four pillars? Distancing. There will be directional tape on the floors that delineates the traffic flow to minimize you know, shoulder to shoulder, back and forth kind of travel, as well as stickers that I'm sure you're all familiar with on the floor for six feet of distancing in places where we may have to stand in line. The other distancing uh, protocol will include minimizing the number of people in hallways at a certain time, and that involves appropriate scheduling and shifting and alterations of schedules so there aren't a lot of kids changing classes um, at the same time. And also in terms of hygiene, our, our cleaning um, team will be disinfecting high touch areas um, many times per day. And I believe we have up to 30,000 doorknobs in the district that will need to be cleaned as well as light switches and elevator switches and railings and anything else that we touch during the day. So that's our hallways. Well, we made it from home to school through the door, down the hallway, and now I'm in my classroom. So let's think about how those four pillars will work in the classroom. So in the classroom, distancing, let's do the D. So for distancing, desks will all be in one direction. So instead of the lovely um, way of people sitting at tables and facing each other, um, for this time period, desks will all face in one direction. So everybody's eyes are at the, at the front of the classroom and maximizing the space in between each desk with the goal of six feet in between. Um, and also with the teacher staying six feet of separation from the students. Also in terms of the classroom, children and teachers will be wearing face coverings um, in the classroom. There will be uh, times for mask breaks in the, in the classroom, and that is supported by both us and the Philadelphia Department of Public Health on taking some time away from masks. Obviously, when people are eating, that will be one of those times, but there will be other times as well. In terms of hygiene, we are going to minimize um, the sharing of tools that are very commonly used in the school. So for example, everyone will have their own pens, their own crayons, their own calculators, um, paint brushes. And when that isn't the case, they will be wiped down um, between uses when that cannot be used. Also, um, we will minimize the presence of soft fabric materials in the classroom, sad to say, um, in terms of making it a warm and fuzzy area, but the teachers and the relationships uh, make them a warm and fuzzy environment. So we're, we would recommend limiting or eliminating or minimizing um, soft fabrics like carpets, little carpet squares, curtains, um, the school class mascot, stuffed animal, and that's because um, they are more difficult and more timely to clean and also hold germs more. So we're trying to minimize those to help maximize um, cleaning at night after everyone is gone. I just wanna make sure that we're covering um, everything in, my, in, in this systematic way. 
So that's why I keep just making sure that I'm using my notes here. Um, in terms of the hygiene, again, all, all of the cleaning materials used on both the buses and in classrooms and in buildings that support um, adult staff will be the CDC guidelines uh, followed for cleaning materials. You can definitely uh, be convinced of that. Also in terms of hygiene, our team is looking at ways to increase um, ventilation. Okay, so that was in the classroom. Let's talk about the faculty. So I am a big fan of cultural arts and I am, will let you know that um, cultural arts will be happening, but it may be happening in the way that the teacher will go to the classroom instead of students going to the art room. So it may be a kind of an art in a cart uh, kind of thing where the teacher will come with their materials to the classroom, again, to minimize um, mixing of student populations. And that being said, the students will all be in cohorts, a well thought out cohort of students that will move when necessary together. There won't be as much mixing in the grade levels that we can, we can actually make that happen. Again, we are doing our best um, on a foundation of cooperation and collaboration to, to make this happen. Um, some parts are tricky and that will be, um, that, that, you know, that will be dealt with as, as we continue to go along. Okay, so to school, through the door, down the hallway, in the classroom. Uh-oh, now I have to use the restroom, another part of our school building. So the restrooms, again, hygiene, will be cleaned frequently with appropriate CDC um, approved uh, cleaning materials. Um, sinks will be delineated as usable or not usable based on distancing, and the same with stalls and urinals. So that's, and, and, and uh, the number of students will be determined by the space in the restrooms, as well as teacher will, teachers will determine who, and, who can go to the, the restroom when. Please keep in mind, I am saying this in a sort of um, very um, delineated way, and my tone is that way. Um, that's really just sort of keeping me on track and using a bit of my teacher voice. Um, but also, again, this meeting is for you to say to me and the rest of our team, have you thought about this? Because I will tell you, I did not think about soft materials in the classroom. And that came from our cleaning team. I was like, wow, that's a really interesting thought that curtains like behind me probably are not great to have in the classroom. So I look to you in your personal experience since this all started in the spring, as well as anything that I'm saying is giving you additional um, thoughts to please voice them at the end. Okay, so now it's time for lunch. What do we do about food service? The food service team has been working very hard um, in collaboration with our health and safety team to think about that. There are two ways to serve food in, in the district, and that will be in the cafeterias or in the classrooms. So one model that different um, school districts have been thinking about around the world, as well as around our nation, is to have students stay in the classroom and have um, meals brought there. There are pros and cons to every one of these decisions, and that's why we want to hear from you. The pro of that is that kids stay in the classroom. The con of that is that there's a lot of trash and maybe some food scraps around the classroom. So again, we are taking all of these into thoughts with our decisions and want your input. So the other thought is to use the cafeteria still in a way that keeps up with our pillars that we've talked about. So our hygiene pillar of, of keeping all the tables clean and keeping ourselves clean and our hands clean and not over touching um, things in the, in the cafeteria having our masks on as we're traveling, dipping them down when we're eating and putting them back up and social distancing in the cafeteria. So you see these themes work in every area. So those two um, thoughts are being debated and um, also having tables in the hallway where students come out to the hallway to obtain their food on a particular floor. Downside to that is four floor walk up schools. So again, we're thinking about it all um, and as we have you know, hundreds of schools, some of these recommendations um, could potentially be tweaked a tiny bit depending on what school um, your child is in. Okay, so physical education. We are planning to have physical education classes using 
um, exercise exercises or games that um, are socially distanced and, and also minimizing touch of balls and things like that, perhaps individualizing some of those materials as well. We also will hope to have physical education classes outside where that is feasible and appropriate um, and also alter spacing of, of those classes for smaller classes. Finally, the health room, which is near and dear to my heart as a pediatrician. We have been working hard to think about how to keep the regular health room and everything that goes on there on, in a non-pandemic uh, situation in a school year, which I'm sure you are all well aware of. Um, so to keep that going, whether that's medication administration, sprained ankles, et cetera, non-infectious issues, education, um, and then what to do about providing care for children who may um, present with symptoms while in, in school. We are thinking hard about that, again, using the guidelines from the CDC and the, and the um, public health institutions and CHOP. And um, we will have an area or a separate room for children who present with symptoms um, to assess them and then have a plan for them. Um, I'm pretty much done with the getting to, through, and what to do in the school day. What I would like to think about is getting back home. So there will be designated pathways again for exiting the building, getting back on buses or other modes of transportation home. And when I think about home, I think about all of you. And again, I would love to hear from all of you in a few minutes of, yeah, that's a great idea. I think that sounds great. Have you thought about this? And um, we will take all of your input. Unfortunately, at this point, um, I will not be able to address individual questions because we really want to hear from as many of you as we can. So I'm going to sign off now and turn it back over to hear your, to hear your input. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Clock, and thank you so much for your comments today. As you indicated, we want to hear from as many people as possible. That's the goal of this session. I want to remind everyone that the session is recorded, and for those of you who may have started with us after uh, the session began, the recorded um, uh, session is going to be located on our website at philasd.org. Just a couple of things as a reminder, for the next few minutes, we're gonna hear feedback from you. It's an opportunity for us to gain input for the final document, the plan that we are producing um, at, uh, moving forward. But to do that, we absolutely wanna hear from as many people as possible. In order to do that, we're not gonna be able to take questions and answers as Dr. Clock indicated. We ask that you raise your hand and that you will be called upon at that time, the, um, system will be unmuted so that you can speak and so that we can uh, hear from you. We really look forward to the feedback that you're offering and uh, know that, uh, please know that we are as uh, a district and listening intently to uh, learn more and to uh, inform our decision-making process with your ideas, your comments, and your opinions. So right now we're going to take the first speaker. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. We're gonna start with uh, Sharice Pastoric. Uh, Sharice. Hi, good morning. Good afternoon, actually. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, go ahead. Okay, um, uh, I'm a preschool teacher and um, my school is not directly, but we do follow the school district in certain aspects. And I was wondering how we plan on having preschoolers using masks all day long. How's that going to work? Uh, did you have a, a comment that you wanted to share regarding that as a school teacher? Yeah, I don't know how that's going to work. If, it, if, that's, if we are going to be following the same guidelines. Can you share more about your comment? Hello, I'm sorry. Yes, can you share more about the comment? Okay, my, my comment is this, how are we gonna be keeping socially distanced when I have 20 students in the classroom along with the teaching assistant 
And how is that going to work with masks? Is that going to be a mandatory thing for preschoolers too within the school district? Got it. Would you prefer that it be? Uh, I do, but it also is concerning to me because I don't know how that's going to work or if it's going to work or if there's like an alternative that we can come up with. But then I guess that would be something I would have to address with my school. Got it. Thank you for your comment and um, the input of the challenge of wearing masks and socially distancing. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Sharice. I'm going to now move to Aaron Cohen. Aaron, you're Sorry. on mute. Go ahead. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, I am immune compromised, and the, the thought of sending my fifth grader and sixth grader to in-person school is terrifying. Um, I'm wondering if there's going to be an alternative to that. By an alternative, what would that look like? Like a virtual alter, like a virtual something, because I I really can't send them out into the world every day and have them bringing home whatever they've been exposed to. It's just it's I I have MS and I I I just can't do it. So I understand you to be commenting on, on the um, whether or not there's going to be an alternative for uh, students who they themselves may not have um, uh, an immune compromise, but the individuals living at home have an immune right. compromised circumstance. Got it. Thank you so much for that, that, that comment and, um, and giving us that input. Okay, thank you, Aaron. Our next speaker is Deborah Hanton. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't have a question yet. Okay. Um, did, did you have a comment that you wanted to make? Um, I, actually, I was raising my hand because I wasn't sure you guys could hear me. So I was just trying to see if I was connected. Thank you so, so I apologize. Much. Thank sorry. you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Our next uh, speaker is Deborah Marie Marici. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi. Um, I have a very similar question to the first speaker. Um, under the four pillars that are laid out, what about these younger children and especially special ed kids who will not remain in their seats or in their um, areas, social distance areas, will not keep the mask on, have hygiene issues, including spitting, what has the school district done to look at that type of support and what we need to put in place? So your, your comment, your feedback, what would you like to see? Um, I guess I would like to see that there be some um, other uh, alternative means of, of teaching that there is some remote teaching available for some of these kids who cannot do any of the four pillars. Got it. Thank you so much for your comment. Okay, thank you. We'll move to Sarah Doherty. Sarah, you're unmuted. Hi, um, okay. So one of the um, things that stood out to me was about the hand washing. And so I would just like a little more feedback about um, like how often they will be hand washing as well as in my child's school, there are not adequate sinks for everyone to be hand washing every time they go to the bathroom. So 
um, what's that going to look like in terms of, of maintaining the hand hygiene while at school. And I was also thinking about coming and going through the main bathroom door and then in stalls. Those are also high touch areas. Is there, um, has that been addressed with some way to minimize germs? Um, the other thing that I was thinking about was um, special needs and people who go to other classes in terms of speech class or OT or PT, um, how is that going to be addressed? If obviously the art she said would come to the classroom, but what's going to happen with, with the other kind of instruction? Okay, I understood your feedback and your input to be that to be that you want to make certain that there are sinks available so that there can be frequent hand washing and um, you uh, and more often as often as prescribed, if not more, that you um, brought to our tent, you, you raise the bathroom stalls and the wiping of the handles and bathroom stalls as something that um, needs to be considered. And you also commented on the special needs um, OTPT and how will um, the instruction for students who need, who are receiving special uh, support uh, be managed. Th yes. Thanks for your input. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Our next speaker is Amina Malik. Hi, how are you? Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay, so I have uh, a few comments. I have four children um, ranging from first grade to high school. Um, my high schooler is going to be on SEPTA, so I'm concerned about that. I feel like um, many of our students uh, are going to be on SEPTA. My, I have a, a middle schooler who goes to Baldy, and her classmates catch SEPTA, and that is their neighborhood school. So that's a concern because even at, as much as you can clean the school buses, majority of our, not majority, but many of our school district students do get on um, SEPTA. Then my child that, my children that are in Anne Frank also catch the district, bu uh, the district bus. Again, the concern about transportation. Um, now my second uh, comment is I feel like we need a better distance learning program. Uh, my, now my son, when he was at Anne Frank, his teacher did a great job uh, with the Google Meets and everything. However, my my older, I don't know if it was me not understanding what they, was going on, it wasn't as effective. So I would rather my children not come into the building yet because it's too many children. Uh, it's just the, the range of my kids going to school. I just, I, I don't feel like this would be, it's not cost effective. Um, distance learning seems to be a better option it's not the best option but right now it's it it isn't working for many of us but it is just it's, it's a better option thank you so miss malik i understood you to raise concern about uh for our attention about septa the numbers of students that are riding septa also the school buses and the clean, cleanliness of the school buses um, and you indicated that a better distance learning um, program needs to be considered um, uh, as effective uh, to be more effective thank you for yeah. your comments thank you thank you our next speaker is diane gillen hello um, I have a couple comments as well. Um, the transportation, since students will be spread out more, are there going to be more buses uh, to accommodate the social distancing on the buses? Um, the masks for students and staff. What about the um, students and staff that have um, anxiety issues with the wearing a mask all day or asthma or other um, health concerns with wearing the mask. Um, the social distancing with spreading them out to get in and to, you know, move around the halls, you know, 25 children, let's say 25 children, 
um, and you spread them out six feet apart, that's a pretty long line. How is that, you know, who's helping to monitor that? Um, because no matter where I would stand in that line, that's a pretty long line. Um, and I can't find Clorox and Lysol products, wipes in the shelves. Um, what are we going to use to wipe things down with? So where is that coming from to wipe things down with? So they are my, they are my few concerns. Thank you so much. I understood your concerns to be um, the uh, buses and uh, how to achieve social distancing on uh, buses, the masks for um, students and staff who, who might have anxiety, um, health conditions like asthma, and how will that be facilitated? Uh, social distancing, like in the hallways, and who's gonna monitor lines with uh, six feet of distance between students? Um, the um, monitoring of all of that, and also where will cleaning supplies come from um, uh, for, for wiping, for um, sanitizing, um, since they're challenging to get um, right now. Thank you for your, your comments and your uh, input into um, the process. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Our next speaker is Patricia Gremmel. Patricia, if you're there. I am, I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Perfect. So um, I, I had a question and obviously I've um, changed it to a comment and it's regarding SEPTA. So I'm just going to uh, pee back off of the uh, previous caller. Uh, they were talking about uh, two types of SEPTA um, transportation. One would be middle school as the caller was uh, referring to for Baldy. They're chartered uh, SEPTA rides. Um, assume that would be an easier uh, thing to um, oversee as far as spacing. But for those of us who have high school children getting onto regular SEPTA buses, there needs to be an arrangement um, made with SEPTA for the timeframes of, um, you know, opening of school and also uh, conclusion of the school day for about spacing as well as masks wearing. Um, although on their website, it does say that uh, riders should wear a mask, that is not enforced. So that is uh, my concern and something that I'm hoping that the uh, school district will address. Thanks. Thank you, Patricia. I understood your uh, feedback and comment to be a uh, concern about the uh, two types of SEPTA arrangements and uh, 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 transportation making arrangements with SEPTA to ensure that we know the stop time and the start time for all schools. Uh, the rules regarding uh, social distancing and mask wearing and I understood you to prefer social distancing and mask wearing on SEPTA. Thank you so much. Thank you, Patricia. Mm -hmm. Our next Speaker is going to be uh, Jebe Kawa. Sorry if I mispronounced. Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Oh, thank you. Uh, mine wasn't a question and your pronunciation was fine, thanks. Um, it, mine wasn't a comment, it's actually a question. Um, I heard something about a green check mark versus a red X, and I wasn't clear um, what that meant and how does a, a student achieve those? I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, we're, not, we're not familiar with what you're speaking of. Um, we're not able to take questions, but I've written down what you have um, asked about to get back to you um, with that information. We're going to post uh, any answers that, that we can find on uh, questions to our website just as quickly as we can. Um, but I would urge you to go to our website and um, include that question if you can. Thank you. 
it was particular to what the speaker, um, the opening speaker had mentioned. So I'm not sure it'll be out in the website, but thanks anyway. Let, let me try and get that for you so that we can um, hopefully clarify. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Our next speaker is Sharon Tice uh, Del Cotto. Hello, I had two comments. Um, what, um, specifically in our school, the, a lot of the classrooms have tables versus individual desks. So am I assuming that there will be some purchases of desks for classrooms like that? Secondly, will the school district be hiring more janitors or contracting with cleaning services for these extra cleaning? Just doesn't seem like that's going to be able to be done with uh, traditional staff or at least the staff that's been, you know, in the past. Thank you so much for your comments. Um, I understood you to uh, comment regarding the purchasing of desks for classrooms uh, to uh, ensure social distancing um, because the current desks may not allow for that. And also um, you commented the, the, regarding the need for additional janitors or contracting companies to ensure that the cleaning that needs to take place occurs. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next speaker is going to be uh, Sumita Ghosh, followed by Ratanya Carr and Steve Buller. Um, so Sumita, you're up. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, good afternoon. So first of all, I am a mom of a second grader son. But he just finished first grader and will be going to second grade. And I am a substitute teacher. So I have both concerns being a teacher and a mom of a small kid. And your uh, program sounds to be very much uh, organized and planned. But my question is how uh, far you can implement it, especially with the, uh, appropriately, especially with the small kids. Like my son, uh, with a mask for the whole day or any kids from K to three or four is very difficult. He always complains, my nose is itching, it falls down from his nose. And also we are in proper uh, downtown Philadelphia school and they're, they're, the classes are packed with 30 kids. So how it is possible to uh, do six feet distancing among the desks? And the same question, they have table, not new desks. And will there be any uh, recess or, as you said, mask off and on in lunch and restroom? I don't know. And I had a question about hours and days of the week. Um, how are you doing that? Uh, Every day school or what? And also, um, we are very susceptible to and also very vulnerable uh, parents. And also, uh, we can manage from home style teaching, distance learning. We did great when, uh, in the spring before summer vacation. I know many parents have constraints for work. They cannot do this. Will there be uh, alternative uh, distance learning available for the kids or parents who are uh, worried about sending them to schools and can manage them from home? That was my question. Thank you. Thank you so much. I understood you to say you have a second grader. You're also a teacher that you are uh, concerned about whether or not uh, young students can wear masks throughout the entire day, um, whether or not social distancing is going to be able to be achieved. I also heard, I think you say that, um, that you like the plan, you're just concerned about whether or not what's been said can actually be achieved. Um, you commented on recess and wearing masks during recess or not, and um, you commented on um, distance learning and uh, having an opportunity uh, for uh, parents and, uh, and or students who um, have the ability and the willingness and prefer to um, uh, learn um, from home. I want to again, um, so I thank you for your comments. I want to again remind everyone um, that we are trying to hear from as many people as possible, um, that there is the opportunity to provide uh, feedback as well online at our FILA um, sd.org slash 2020 school start. 
Um, so if questions uh, um, could be um, focused there, that would be absolutely ideal. And for those of you who may not have the opportunity uh, to speak today, um, we're, we're creating another opportunity um, in another couple of days. And as well, you can go to the website. So I'm gonna mention it several times before we end so that you'll know uh, other opportunities for providing um, feedback. Thank you so much for your comments. Um, next speaker. Yes, our next speaker is Ratanya Carr, be followed by Steve Buller and Jan Farrell. So Ratanya, you're up. Great, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Fantastic, thank you uh, Dr. Clock and to the school district staff we're working on these very complex issues. Um, I have a, a children in the school district and I'm also an, a physician of adult uh, patients. I'm just going to um, read through my um, questions um, because I know that you're just taking a list and, and they and don't have opportunity to respond to them right now. Um, I have one recommendation in line with the pillar of um, hand washing that uh, students and staff uh, could use contactless hand sanitizer on upon entry. Um, kids are going to be coming off of school buses, public uh, transportation, so we should ensure that hands are washed um, prior to entering the building. Um, I'd like to know uh, how the overcrowded class sizes are going to be addressed in a number of our, our schools and classrooms. Um, this is really an opportunity for downsizing of classes um, so that uh, these uh, pillars can be maintained um, by all children, uh, regardless of, of neighborhood. I'd like to hear comments about how the playground uh, is going to be cleaned in between uh, use for schools that have playgrounds. Uh, clarification of uh, ventilation systems for schools that have um, already known uh, uh, challenges with their ventilation systems um, that we've seen over the prior year. Are there going to be upgrades uh, prior to enrollment? Um, I would recommend that uh, staff can be screened uh, with temperature checks prior to entry as well. Um, perhaps they can come in a little earlier uh, to undergo uh, on-site screening um, and that could accommodate everyone. Um, I'd also like information about um, how teachers are going to screen kids for possible COVID-like symptoms, what special trainings are going to be in place for them to identify kids who may need to go uh, to the nursing for additional uh, triage. I'd like to hear um, information about uh, the provision of PPP for all staff at all schools at all times uh, during the COVID pandemic. And finally, I'd like to hear information about how families are going to be communicated with regarding any uh, potential COVID outbreaks uh, prior to uh, decisions being made about school closures. Thank you. Sorry, um, Dr. Carr, could you please uh, share the second to last? You said something about PPEs. I did not get that. Uh, yes, I'd like to know um, about the um, uh, process for making sure that PPP or PPE are available for all staff at all times uh, for the duration of the pandemic. Um, so at all schools. And uh, did you hear about the co the communication failures, uh, uh, communication uh, with families uh, if there is um, a failure of our, our system and uh, COVID outbreak happens? I did. Thank you so much. I heard those two. I also heard uh, info on uh, how teachers will screen students um, and what training they're going to receive in order to um, be able to know uh, which students to refer to the nurse's office um, or for uh, additional uh, screening. And the screening of staff with uh, temperature um, uh, with temperature checks, I heard that. Um, ventilation systems within the schools and whether or not they're going to be upgraded given what the CDC and others have said about the importance of ventilation. Uh, playground cleaning um, and whether or not that's gonna take place um, in between the, um, the uh, students on the playground and, and what, that's, what that details. Um, how overcrowding in the classroom uh, will be addressed and whether or not this is an opportunity for downsizing our classrooms. Hand sanitizers upon entry so that as students get off the bus and enter the schools, um, they um, can sanitize um, uh, their hands because we talked about frequent hand washing. Um, I, I thank you for your comments and uh, your input and your feedback. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is gonna be Steve Buller, followed by Jan Farrell. Uh, so Steve. Uh, thank you. If at any point in time you need me to speak louder, let me know. Sometimes my microphone uh, records lower and I like to speak softly. Um, 
So some of my thoughts revolving around, I didn't hear anything in regards to the pillar and the foundation about testing. Would it be feasible for us to add any testing measures? Um, if you look at, there's different organizations trying to do that to ensure and track where COVID is at and prevent it. Um, where else am I at? So one of my concerns was with, if we're looking at also caregivers to be responsible for screenings, is there any way for us to ensure that they have the equipment necessary to monitor an individual's temperature? I mean, just facing the reality that many people are living in precarity throughout the city and may not have access to that. Um, with teachers and staff entering the building with the survey, I know it will be problematic as a teacher myself. I am aware of many individuals that are staff that do not have access to a smartphone. So are we also looking into other measures on how people can test to get into the building? Um, movement in the hallways, we already talked about the social distancing. Is it possible to convert it to one way only so that you could have, in theory, two lines moving at the same time to cut that distance drastically down. Cause I already know if you have 16 kids within the confines of my school, that's going to be problematic. Um, where else? Oh, no, that was it. So I'm good. I'll yield my time. Thank you so much. Very much appreciated. I heard you uh, indicate the, um, uh, concern about the uh, Pillar Foundation, you um, spoke to the, uh, the testing measures. Um, you indicated, um, uh, you commented on the caregivers and the responsibility for uh, screening and whether or not uh, families in their homes will have the equipment that's needed in order to do temperature checks and the screening for um, uh, their students, their children before they come to school. Uh, you mentioned the survey, um, which would be electronic and um, uh, noted that there should be other ways for people to complete that survey because not everyone has a smartphone and you spoke to uh, converting within our schools um, a, a one-way hallway process so that um, we can achieve better social distance. Thank you so much for your comments and your thoughts. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. We have three minutes left for this session, so we're going to take one more uh, speaker. Next speaker is Gian Farrell. So Gian, you are Hi. unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, uh, just a few things. I, I would like to recommend that there be chest, checklists in the hallways, in the classrooms, in the bathrooms uh, that were initialed so that in time, so people know when they were cleaned. Um, there was no mention of the computer lab and its usage uh, and also vocal music. Uh, so I'm curious as to if those, uh, you know, are going to happen and be used. Um, and a set of procedures for when a teacher or a child gets COVID-19 uh, ahead of time so we kind of know what the process is. And uh, has the substitute service uh, company been uh, notified and have they indicated that they have um, people that are committed to work in our schools? Just curious if that's been touched base on. Uh, and also I heard that air conditioners were not going to be used and I'm not sure how schools are going to function in the heat without air conditioning. And I want to know if that is true or not. Uh, um, and the other thing is to add on to the list because I know it wasn't put on the additional or the list that the district came out with a few years about what's supposed to be done is the hand railings to make sure that that is done. I know it sounds like an assumption, but it wasn't on the initial list that the district sent out like two years ago about everything that the cleaning folks are supposed to do daily. Um, and that's it. I'm seeking to clarify. I believe that with the hand railings, you were asking about the cleaning process for the hand railings and that something had been said in the past and you want to make certain that uh, hand railings will be clean. You asked about air conditioners and uh, clarity on whether or not uh, air conditioners will be used um, with regard to, or, or not, um, with regard to ventilation. You uh, uh, reminded 
of the importance of uh, substitute ser the substitute services company being informed about uh, our policies and our protocols and what it is that we plan to do so that they are, are uh, also most informed and consistent. Um, you spoke to the procedures uh, for um, uh, announcing and sharing the procedures for when um, someone uh, is uh, test positive uh, for COVID. Uh, you spoke to the checklist uh, in hallways and also uh, uh, to, to determine and to know when they were last cleaned and having something outside of the uh, bathrooms for um, init uh, initiated when the cleaning has taken place. Uh, could you please clarify, I believe you said something regarding music and I didn't quite hear that. Uh, sure. Uh, it was about computer, the computer lab. There was no mention of that being used. And also uh, whether the like auditorium would be like in our school, we use the auditorium for vocal music. Um, would that be happening? Because um, I know that that's a question. And the other thing I forgot to mention was the use of hall and restroom monitors, because the fact that how can a teacher, if I send my student out, how do I know that there's not five other kids in the restroom? Excellent. Thank you so much, Ms. Farrell. Very much appreciated. Yep. All right. Well, th that brings us to the end of our opportunity um, uh, today. And I want to thank everyone for their participation and for sharing such outstanding um, uh, comments and feedback. Um, the uh, comments that have been received are very thoughtful, well considered, and definitely will inform um, our decision making and the production of our document. If you did not have the opportunity to share feedback today, I want to remind all that the health and safety session uh, number two will be uh, this coming Thursday, July 9th from 5 to 6. Uh, also this evening we have a um, follow-up uh, uh, virtual town hall on uh, instruction and curriculum. And I invite everyone to visit phillasd.org 2020 school start and submit their comments, their feedback, and their questions there. I thank you very much and have a great afternoon.